All right, so we left off, you said 12 or 13. Is that this one? Okay, so this is where we need to start today. On your reference sheet during the final, you will have this note at the bottom. Did everybody find the reference sheet and see this at the bottom? I think I even boxed these on your reference sheet, okay? The issue is we used a colored unit circle. Do you remember that? We colored in the you know, little half sheet cardstock unit circle. You don't get that for the final. This is for inverse trig functions, which is things like sine negative one, arc tan, remember that stuff? Okay. The issue is easy one, cosine, inverse cosine is defined, says between zero and pi. No renumbering necessary. You just need to know to look only in those two quadrants, right? Cosine is negative here and positive here, but we can't look down there. All right. Inverse sine and inverse tangent are in the same two quadrants. They're from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, which is what quadrants? 1 and negative pi over 2 would be 4, right? Same two quadrants, 1 and 4. The problem becomes the answer you give me from quadrant 4 has to be negative and less than pi over 2. So if it's that first one right there, it's going to be negative pi over 6. Does that make sense? Because you just look at the positive one and reflect it. The next one will be negative pi over 4, negative pi over 3, negative pi over 2, and you're good, right? So even though it's not renumbered, remember we used this one that was renumbered. Do you remember that? But we don't get that on the final, okay? You have to know to remember that. Okay. So here's the two questions for which that matters. They should be the easiest points ever. You just have to make sure you renumber your unit circle and know which quadrants. So inverse sine negative square root of 2 over 2. So inverse sine is these two quadrants. Sine is negative square root of 2 over 2 is right there. But instead of answering 7 pi over 4, you have to call it negative pi over 4. Arc cosine of negative one half or inverse cosine of negative one half. Well, cosine is in these two quadrants. Cosine is negative one half right there. So we just get to write two pi over three. All right. This question says, where's an angle whose tangent is negative 15 eighths? But I don't really want to know what the angle is. I just want to know its sine. Anybody remember how we do that? We just draw and label. What quadrant is tangent negative in? Arc tangent is defined as negative in. Well, if you go back here, it says tangent has to be either in negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So where would it be negative? Oh, guys, you're scaring me. Four, yes? Because arc tangent is only defined in quadrants one and four. And it's negative in quadrant four. We good? All right. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So from this reference angle, we have a 15 and an 8. Or tangent is y over x. There's the y going down and the x going across. Which one is going to be negative? To make this negative, we had to go down 15. The 8 can't be negative. We do Pythagorean theorem. Anybody know what we're going to get? 17. So now all of this was to help us draw the picture. Now they want to know what's the sign right there. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we have, good job. Can everybody get that one right? That's just a draw question. The only trick is knowing which quadrant, right? All 
All right, this is using the identities. These are two super easy questions because the answers are right on the sheet, reference sheet. Can you look on your reference sheet and find one that says 2 sine theta times the cosine of theta equals, what does it equal? It's here, yes? Double angle relations? Find it? Okay, so it's under double angle. And it says sine 2 theta. But we don't have a theta. We have a what? 6x. So we got to put the 6x in there. I would accept if you wrote sine of two 6x's. I really would appreciate it if you just simplified it to sine of 12x. But I'll, either one is okay. Can you find this one? 2 cosine squared of something minus 1. It's also under double angles, isn't it? It's the cosine of 2 somethings. But our something, while it had a theta, it also had a what in there? 3, so it's 2, 3 thetas, or cosine of 6 theta. Can you get those right? Given the reference sheet, I sure hope so. All right. This one is using sum and difference identities. It says right up here, use sum and difference trig identities. Hmm. Okay. You don't have to copy this on here, but can somebody find me the one that says cosine A minus B? What does it say? Cosine A, cosine B, is that right? And plus sine, sine? Did I hear you right? Okay. You don't have to copy that onto your final, but what are you going to do with this? It says expand. You have to show the expanded one for points. So what is it going to do when you expand it with an X and a 3 pi over 2? You're going to write cosine X times cosine Anybody awake? What's B in our equation right up here? 3 pi over 2 plus, what are we going to write? Sine x times sine 3 pi over 2. Then simplify this expression. Well, can you go to 3 pi over 2 on your unit circle? What's the ordered pair? 0, negative 1? Did I get it right? Okay. So at 3 pi over 2, the cosine is replaced with what? 0. And the sine is replaced with? So I have the cosine of x times 0, which sounds a lot like 0, plus the sine of x times negative 1, which would simplify to negative sine x. This question will be wrong if all you circle is negative sine x, okay? I cannot stress enough that this is a tricky question. It says choose all that are equivalent. Can you find somewhere on your sheet where it says negative sine x? It says negative sine x is also equal to what? It's an odd function, so it's also equal to sine negative x, which is here. What if it said cosine of x? Can you find what that's equal to? Just for practice, in case that happened to be the one on the test? Cosine of x is equal to what? Cosine of negative x. It's even, so the negative goes away. All right, what if it said negative cosine? Is there anything that that's equal to? Nope. All right. Any questions? Just read carefully, guys. All right. This question is worth a lot of points, and parts of it are super easy. I think it's all pretty easy. First of all, do Pythagorean theorem. Anybody helping me? 
Do Pythagorean theorem. Anybody finding the missing leg down here? 12 is correct. Okay. This is angle alpha, which puts us into quadrant two, but we still use the reference angle in here to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle. We only need sine and cosine. So in green, I'm doing these two right here. On this picture, what is the sine of that triangle? Opposite over hypotenuse would be cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, negative 24 25ths. We good? All right. Then we're going to go over here. This is beta. That one, we don't have to do anything tricky. It's just this angle. doesn't matter. It's all in the first quadrant. What are the sine and cosine? 5 over 13 and 12 over 13. Okay. You earned a point or two. How are we doing? Right triangle trig so far, right? Okay. This says trig identity 4. Guess what? All you have to do is copy it off the identity sheet to get your point. Can you find it? What does it say for sine alpha minus beta? Okay, is that what he said? I even don't care if you write A's and B's instead of alphas and betas. But did it cap did he read it to me right, guys? I don't have those memorized, so make sure that's right. Now what? All we gotta do is plug in numbers. And when we plug in numbers, does it still say sine of 725th? No, the sine of alpha is just what? Just 725th. The cosine of beta is just uh, 12 thirteenths, right? It's this one. Minus the cosine of alpha, which was negative 24 25 times the sine of beta, which was 5 thirteenths. Okay, you can use a thousand pair of parentheses and put it all in your calculator. Or you could just multiply the top and the bottom. You'd get 84 over 325. This is minus a negative, which would become plus. 24 times 5 is 120 over 325. What do you do when you add? Add the top, keep the bottom. 2 over 4, 204 over 325. Did anybody type it on their calculator and get that craziness? Yep, Emilio says it works on the calculator. All right, guys, we have two more questions I need to get through before we get to the next standard we can do this this one says two i'm just going to pick a letter m squared minus an m minus one equals zero it says sine but we're just going to pretend for a minute how would that factor uh, we need this one to be minus two plus one in the middle okay so it factors two sine x plus one and sine x minus one Okay, do I need to put plus or minus 2 pi n on these answers? It says only in the interval 0 to pi n. Easy peasy. All we have to do is look at our unit circle. If we set this equal to 0, we'll have the sine x has to equal what? Negative 1 half, right? And this one will be the sine of x is 1. Okay, I haven't come upon a unit circle for a while here. Here's one. Okay, was sine is negative one half? Is that what it said? Here's one of those over here at 11 pi over 6 and one here at 7 pi over 6, right? What was the other one? Sine is positive 1? That's up here at pi over 2. Do I need plus or minus anything? No, it was 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, and pi over 2. All right, last one, guys, for today. Pythagorean identity, you have to identify which one you're trading. 
what's this? This is the only one that's a Pythagorean sum and difference. What is the one it says on your sheet? Somebody find it? Okay. Because it says identify, you need to write that down. But then you can go over here, and this is going to trade for cosecant, which will trade for a what? 1 over sine squared. Okay, this one is a plain old sine squared. This one is a plain old cosine. We could put this over 1 if we wanted, right? Just to remind ourselves it's on top. This is a plain old cosine squared, which is also on top. But this last one is what? 1 over cosine. You have to have some kind of justification. This is it. That's all you got to do. You don't have to do anything fancy, but it says show your work and justify. Now what happens? Cancels, cancels, doesn't cancel, cancel. This cancels one of these, yes? So there's still a cosine left on top. And just a one on the bottom. But you get some, you lose some credit if you don't write down some work there. Because it says, show your work and identify any Pythagorean triple that you, or identity that you used. Okay. So Monday we're going to finish the other two standards. We've got to do conics and sequences. Then we'll go on and review.